The Christian journey is a marathon, not a sprint. And this means that there will be times when you'll be tired. There will be times when you pause to take a breath. And there will be times when you're energized to run. When you're faced with downtimes or when your fire goes out, what should you do? While you may face downtimes, it's important that you mustn't stay down for long because the devil will try to attack you in your time of weariness. The Bible says that though the righteous fall down seven times, he rises again. No matter how down you are, it's not your end. You have to realize that because the enemy will try to fill your heart with thoughts of fear to stop you from rising again. He'll try to fill you with so much guilt that you can no longer go before the presence of God. The problem isn't with your failing. The problem isn't with your falling. The problem is with the devil trying to keep you down. So you have to decide that no matter how much your fire goes out, you will rise again. No matter how guilty you feel, you will take your guilt before God and repent. When your fire goes out, you must decide to light it again. One of the Psalms of David says, Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. This means that he got to a point when he lost the joy of his salvation. The troubles of this life, sickness, poverty, and even the good things like wealth and influence can steal away the joy of your salvation. They can so distract you that you become weary and no longer focus on your spiritual health. Forgetting that physical things are temporal, but spiritual things are eternal. Have you ever gotten to that point when it seems you've lost your focus or when your fire has gone out? Then you'll understand David's prayer. Restore the joy of my salvation. The beautiful thing about being a believer is that even when we lose the joy of our salvation, there's a provision for restoration in the kingdom of God. No matter how down you feel, you can still be on fire again. Restoration is real. Restoration is possible. And you can ask God for restoration. Before we continue, can you take a minute to ask God to restore your fire? Hallelujah! So what do you do when your fire goes out? What are you to do when you're down spiritually? Here are some steps you can take if you're facing this. Get into a community. There's a reason why it's written in Hebrews that we shouldn't neglect the gathering of the saints. We are stronger together and we do better together. Let's use this illustration when we have a group of burning candles and the light of one of them dies. It's a lot easier to pick up the candle and get it lighted from contact with other candles. Truthfully, fervency is contagious. You can't keep staying around those who are fervent, keep talking to them, relating with them, and just fellowshipping with them and not be influenced by them. Someone said that you are the sum of your closest friends. You need a community that is fervent so that you can get back on track. Do you want to burn again? Then keep the company of those who burn consistently. When predators, whether lions, tigers, or any other predator want to attack their prey, they tend to target those distant or away from the herd because it's easier to attack and kill the prey when it's alone than to attack the whole herd. 
there's protection in the community. The devil, our adversary, is like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. And he targets those far from the Christian community. Your community may be a church. It may be a group of friends who pray together. And it may be your family. Just ensure that you're in a community of those on fire. The more immersed you are in that community, the faster the fire catches up to you. Look around you and find a community of believers that you can be a part of and join yourself to them. Set your atmosphere. Another thing to do when your fire goes out is to set your atmosphere. You know the way you set the atmosphere for a romantic dinner. You get the rose petals and place them around the venue. Get the right kind of music and ensure that you have a bit of privacy. You can also set the atmosphere of your place of fellowship with God. How do you do this? Play the right kind of music around you. When your fire goes out, that's not the time to fill your ears with secular music of sexual content or content that goes against your faith. Instead, that's the time to intentionally surround yourself with music that fills your mind with the Word of God. Listen more to worship music. Listen to Christian rap. Listen to songs about God. You may say that you don't have the time for this, but that's a lie. On your way to work, plug your earbuds in and listen to godly music. While you're working out, plug your ears. You're picking out groceries. Plug your ears. Ensure that the right kind of music consistently surrounds you. Worship music tends to spur you to pray. Apart from filling your mind with the Word of God, they also speak to your soul and spirit and make it easier for you to pray and connect to God. You can also listen to messages or teachings on the sound doctrine of the Word. Technology has made many things easier for us, and if you're struggling with studying your Bible, you can use an audio Bible and listen to it when you're about to sleep. Let the Word of God continually surround you. Guard your heart. Also guard your heart in this season. The gates to your hearts are your eyes with which you see, your ears with which you hear, and your mouth with which you speak. While your eyes and ears would take in information from your heart, your mouth expresses what's in your heart. When your fire is down, ensure that you guard your heart. Don't expose yourself to any wrong or ungodly content in this season. Be careful of the kinds of movies you watch and the music you listen to. The truth is that information is the soul's food, and whatever you feed will grow. If you want to grow spiritually, and if you want to be fervent, you have to feed on what will help you spiritually and protect your heart from all that will harm your spiritual health. Be vulnerable with God. When your fire goes out, it's not the time to start pretending with God. Be vulnerable with Him and let Him know that you're struggling. Talk to God about your struggles and ask Him for help. Jesus, our high priest, understands us. He was once a man, and he had struggles that he faced but triumphed. You don't have to be perfect before God. You only have to ensure you come to His presence. It is in His presence that you grow into perfection. Be accountable and get partners who can help you. When you're struggling spiritually, 
it's important that you're accountable and that you get partners that can help you. Get a prayer partner and reach out to someone in your community with whom you can pray. You can also get a Bible study partner that you can study the Word with and discuss the Scriptures with. No one is a spiritual macho. We all need each other's help, and accountability will help you. We must realize that at the point when our fire goes out, what we need is the discipline to bring it back. At this point, prayer will seem tedious. Studying the Bible may also be difficult, but you must continue. Ignore your feelings and focus on your growth. Keep seeking God no matter how difficult it seems, and as you continue, you will receive God's help and get to a point when it's no longer difficult. You can get back your fire. Never forget that. Don't listen to the devil's lies that you'll remain like this forever. I pray that your fire will be restored in Jesus' name.